Hello, God bless you. Welcome to Extreme Devotion. My name is Samuel Benitez, and I am going to open up in prayer real quick, and then we'll get started with tonight's Bible study. Heavenly Father, I come before you this night. God, I just want to thank you for another day of life. I thank you for waking us all up this morning. I thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. God, I thank you for um, everybody who comes across this video, God. I pray for them, and I, I thank you for them, God. I thank you for uh, the continued growth on this channel in these past weeks and months and two months. God, I just thank you for all that you were doing. I thank you for granting favor on this channel. As to God be the glory. I know it has nothing to do with me and everything to do with you. And I just thank you for all those who come across this video, God. I know that it is not coincidence and uh, that you have led them there to hear something from you. And that it has nothing to do with me, God. I just pray that you speak through me. Let it always be your words and never mine. In the name of Jesus, amen. So welcome back to Tuesday Night Bible Study. For those of you returning viewers, you can see that I've, you know, changed some things with the intro video and all that. You know, uh, one thing about me is I, I get bored very easily, which is um, good and bad. And <laughs> when it comes to this channel, I think it's good because I'm just constantly looking for ways to improve it. And, you know, I've come a long way since I first started this channel. And I've got a long way to go still. But, yeah, I'm always changing things. I'm always getting bored. Uh, and I'm always looking to spice things up here on the channel as best to my ability. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, tonight we're starting um, a different Bible study. We spent the last three weeks going over the favor of God. And uh, we, we completed that last Tuesday, uh, week number three. Tonight is going to be a standalone message. Um, I'll think of another topic to uh, go into, but uh, tonight is just going to be a standalone message, just one one message, and the title is Keep Your Eyes on Jesus. Now, I've been sitting on this message for about a month now. Um, I was supposed to do it at church, but, you know, things didn't work out. Um, you know, that's how life is sometimes, you know, things change. Um, so I've been sitting on this Bible study for about a month now, waiting to do it at church, and it, it just never, it never happened. So, now that that's over, um, I'm doing it uh, here on the channel. I always intended to, uh, but I wanted to wait and see first. I wanted to do it there first and then put it on the channel. So um, things didn't work out. Things changed. And uh, so now I'm putting it on the channel tonight, keeping your eyes on Jesus. Now, the first scripture that I want you guys to look up real quick is, Matthew chapter 14, verse 30. Give you a little bit of time to get there. Matthew chapter 14, verse 30. You know, in life, so many things take our eyes off of Jesus, right? It's very easy to get lost and distracted and to have our focus broken. It's extremely easy. It's it's hard to do the opposite. It's hard to keep our eyes on Jesus, right? Because we're human and Everything distracts us, and we're going to go over those things tonight. So as Christians, as believers, we must always keep our eyes on Jesus. Now, Matthew chapter 14, verse 30, this is where Peter walked on water, you know. Regardless of your upbringing, regardless of how much you know about the Bible, I think everybody has heard the story of Peter walking on water. And that just sounds mind-blowing, right? But we see here in Matthew chapter 14, verse 30, it says, But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. See, save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. He shouted. So this is a story of where Peter walks on water. You know, they're, they're in the boat. The storm is going on, and all of a sudden they look out and they see Jesus walking on the water. They think it's a ghost. They're terrified. They all think they're going to die. And now they see, you know, somebody walking on the water, and it was Jesus. And Peter basically says, obviously, this is this is meant for you to go read it for yourself. I'm just paraphrasing. That's why I only read verse 30. Peter says, you know, if it's really you, call me out on the water. And Jesus calls him out on the water. And he steps off the boat, and he begins to walk on water. Peter, a regular human being just like you and me, walking on water. And verse 30, it says, But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Okay, now 
I want to focus on this, but when he saw, okay? But when he saw, was it calm when Peter stepped off of the boat? No, the storm was already going, okay? So he stepped into the storm. It says, but when he saw the strong wind and the waves. Well, it's not like it was nice and calm when he first stepped off the boat. It was already raging. The storm was already raging, right? So the storm was already active and he stepped into the storm. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. The storm was already active. He stepped into the storm in spite of his surroundings. Things started off well for Peter. So things, they started off well for Peter. He said, if it's really you, call me out in the water. So Jesus called him out and he stepped off. He stepped into the storm knowing full well what was going on around him. But when he took his eyes off Jesus and focused on the surroundings that were always there, that were always real and active, he began to sink. Peter Walked on water for a few moments. Who knows how, how long exactly. But Peter walked on water. A miracle took place until he lost his focus. So when we fix our eyes on Jesus and not our circumstance and not our surroundings or what is going on around us, miracles take place. A miracle took place that moment in the life of Peter. And when we fix our eyes on Jesus, miracles will take place in our life. Now, I'm not saying that we're all going to, you know, be walking on water. You know, don't try that the next time you're out there um, on a boat. Chances are you, you won't intentionally go out on a boat in a storm. They won't take you out on a boat in a storm. We're talking about much different times. But when we fix our eyes on Jesus, there were no safety laws back then, right? But when we fix our eyes on Jesus, a miracle will take place in our life. When we allow our circumstance to take our eyes off of Jesus, our miracles get disrupted and we begin to sink. And that's what we see happen to Peter. A miracle took place for a few moments, but when he allowed his surroundings to take his eyes off of Jesus, his miracle was disrupted and he began to sink and he had to shout out to Jesus, Lord, save me. And Jesus did, right? He, he did. And he does the same for us. So when we fix our eyes on Jesus, miracles take place in our life. But when we allow the circumstances and the, our surroundings of life to break our focus and remove our eyes off of Jesus, our miracles get disrupted and we sink. When we make our problems bigger than God and we only see the problem, we only see the circumstance, or when we realize that God is bigger than our problem, we only see Jesus and he blocks our problem. It's there we know it, we, it's there. The problem is there. It's real. It's active. We know it's there. But all we see is Jesus. And we know it's under control. And we can function in spite of our circumstances. So when we fix our eyes on Jesus, that doesn't mean that the issues go away. It means that we are not focused on the issue. We fix our eyes on Jesus. The problem is still there. We know it's there. We're dealing with it on a daily basis. But as long, whatever it may be, and we'll, we'll get into some things of, of what they what they can be. But as long as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the fact that it's there doesn't control our thoughts. It doesn't control our minds. Philippians 4 verse 8 is one of my favorite scriptures. You know, when we talk about what we fix our thoughts on, you know, things that are, you know, lovely, things that are pure, you know, things that are honorable. Go read it. Philippians 4 verse 8. I've saved it on my phone as a screensaver because that's how important it is to me. So. We know the problems that we're facing and dealing with are there. They're real. They're active. We deal with them on a daily basis. But when we fix our eyes on Jesus, we know that it's all under control and we can function in spite of our circumstance. Because when we take our eyes off of Jesus, we lose our ability to function, right? I'm sure we all can relate. We lose our ability to function because... We're no longer focused on Jesus. We're focused on the problem and we lose all ability to function because we're operating in our own strengths. I know that all too well. You know, the moment I take my eyes off of Jesus, I lose all, all ability to function because 
I'm trying to do things on my own strength and in my own strength and under my own power. And as a human being, I'm very weak. And it doesn't take me more than two seconds to just sink and just to sink down into my into my issues when I take my eyes off Jesus. So when we keep our eyes on Jesus, and it doesn't mean that we'll do this perfectly, but when we keep our eyes on Jesus, we're able to function in spite of our circumstance because we're relying and we're trusting in the strength of God and not our own. It's not easy. It's very difficult. But Peter shows us that it is possible, even if for just a few moments, he showed us that it was possible. And what can take place when we remain focused on Jesus? Just imagine what can take place in our lives when we remain focused, when we keep our eyes on Jesus. Just imagine the possibilities. Peter walked on water in the middle of a storm. That's pretty insane, right? That's pretty, that's that's like next level. And that's an understatement. So Imagine what can take place. Just look what took place in his life. He walked on water in the middle of a storm and he didn't need a magic trick. He didn't need deception, you know, like the magicians use. It's all deception, right? He didn't need any of that because Jesus was right there with him and he believed. So we see what happened in his life, the miracle that took place there. Imagine the possibilities of what would take place in our life if we could just remain focused and keep our eyes on Jesus. First, First Corinthians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, not in our own strength, but in the strength of Christ. We do well for a while, and then something happens, and we sink. And that's the story of my life, and I'm sure many of you can relate. Doing well, man, doing really well, walking on water, metaphorically speaking, right? Not literally, but, you know, spiritually speaking, doing really well, walking on water. Then something happens, and we begin to sink. I know that's the story of my life, and I know many of you out there can relate as well. We're doing well. And then something causes us to take our eyes off of Jesus and we lose our focus and we begin to sink. Now, what are some of the causes of broken focus? What are some of the causes of broken focus? The first one is circumstances. Life will throw us curveballs. Life will throw us change-ups for all you baseball fans out there, right? You know, you're expecting a, a, you know, a fastball. You're expecting a slider. And the next thing you know, life throws a curveball. Life throws a change up. Circumstances. You know, it may be at work. It may be in your own family. Issues with your in, in your marriage. Issues with family members, right? Children, financial, health, etc. Life throws us curveballs. You know, this year has been a year of curveballs for me. It's been a messy year. You know, I've 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 sank, you know, for quite a bit of the year. You know, that's what I do here, right? I keep it real. I don't come on here and I and try to portray this image that I walk out all this perfectly that I talk about. No, I talk about what I'm trying to walk out, you know, as I, and I and I stumble and and I fail miserably at times. You know, work has been an issue for me this year with, you know, major changes that I had no control over and, you know, was out of my control and that circumstance caused me to sink. Um, it had an effect financially on me, uh, even till this moment, you know, I lost money out of my control. Um, and then health, you know, I've, I've had, you know, um, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, I've been making posts throughout the year concerning my wife and now concerning my son health scares that God always works out, but it's not comfortable, you know, right. When you, when you get an unsettling report, from the doctor concerning a loved one, like your wife or your son, and you have to wait, you know, for all this to be confirmed or not confirmed. And 
this test and that test and, you know, you know, specialists dropping the ball, won't return your phone calls. They're not, they're not, they don't seem to be in a, in a hurry. You know, you're concerned because they gave you unsettling news and, but they don't, but then they just drop the ball, right? You know, all these things and God always works it out, but it's uncomfortable in the meantime. So life will throw us curveballs. It will throw us a change up and how we react to it matters. You know, like I said throughout the year, my situation at work, it caused me to sink many, many days. You know, um, I, I, I speak a lot to the men um, at the at the ranch that I spoke to for the past, you know, four years. And this message was intended um, for them uh, originally. And then I was going to do it here on my channel, but I, I didn't get a chance to give it to them. So who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll come across this on YouTube because I, I know they, they, they talk about watching me sometimes. So right now I'm going to speak to the men of the ranch. Your issues while at the ranch will cause you to take your eyes off of Jesus if you allow them to. Issues that loom over you like court and family because a lot of the men at the ranch are dealing with court, right? It's it's a it's a faith-based, you know, uh rehab, right? And a lot of them are dealing with court issues and, you know, you know, family issues, you know, broken relationships back home, right? And these issues loom over them. Maybe, you know, it's um, broken relationships with their spouse, their mother, their father, uncles, aunts, children, right? Court dates, you know, court, you know, situations, right? All these issues that loom over them, the enemy will use that to cause them to take their eyes off of Jesus and only focus on the problem while they spend their year at the ranch. The enemy uses these situations and circumstances as distractions to get them and to get us to think that things will never improve in our lives. He does this to take our eyes off of Jesus and onto the storm. And then we ca it causes us to sink. The enemy wants to waste your year at the ranch. And the enemy wants us to waste our time. He wants us to waste our life focused on the storm and not Jesus. The second cause of broken focus is our surroundings, it's the world, it's relationships, right? And the chaos of this world, you know. You know, last month at church, the topic for the men was relationships, godly relationships. And you know, that that covers a lot, you know, of of areas. And one of the main issues for you know for men and women is ungodly relationships. The enemy will bring ungodly relationships in to take our eyes off of Jesus. What I like to always say is if the relationship don't bring you closer to God, then it's a distraction, you know, and that's something that I got from my own father. You know, when me and my wife started dating, we were old school, you know, and the families were involved. I went to her father and start and asked for permission just to ask her out on a date. And then when we decided to become boyfriend and girlfriend, our both parents, you know, they met and with us and we just talked about things and I'll never forget what my father said. And I know that's silly to a lot of people, but you know, I grew up old school and my father said that that night in the church parking lot, what I want from this relationship between you and April is to make each other better Christians, make each other better Christians. That's the whole point of Christian dating. OK, Christian dating is to make each other better Christians. It's not to get into bed. It's not to do all the things that the world does. Even if you've already done those things, you know. Now you're a Christian. Now you're a new creation. Now you start over. You got a clean slate. You're born again, right? And my father said, the whole purpose of this relationship between you and April is to bring each other closer to God. So if the relationship is not bringing you closer to God, then it's nothing more than an unhealthy distraction. A relationship from God will not take you from God. It's that simple. It's, it's, it's that simple. There's no other way to look at it. How is he or she, because I'm talking to everybody here, right? But how is he or she making you a better Christian? If they're not making you a better Christian and you're not making them a better Christian, then that relationship is a relationship of unequally yoked and it's just an unhealthy, ungodly distraction. It's not about how fine she is or how fine he is for the ladies, but how godly they are. Because it's the Christ in them that makes that person attend, you know, in, in, uh, you know, dating, right. You know, 
you always hear people saying, oh, they checked all my boxes, right? On both sides, men and women. Oh, he or she checked all my boxes. Well, what if your boxes are wrong? What if the things that you're looking for in a, in a, in a female or a male, you know, what if they're wrong? You know, what if your, you know, your flesh is, you know, oh, you know, she's fine or he's fine. And what if all those boxes that you're looking to be checked, what if they're wrong? What if, what does that matter if they don't check God's box? That's the whole, the only thing that matters is God's box. And at the end of the day, it's the Christ in this person that makes them attend. It's the Christ inside him or her that should draw you to that person, not their body, not their looks. That's, you know, nice. That's part of it. You know, it's not, I'm not, you know, ignoring those things, but at the end of the day, those things are, that's superficial, all right? That's superficial. And as a Christian and as a believer, it's the Christ in that person that should be drawing us to that person, not how fine they are, not how they check off your boxes. So, you know, relationships will be a thing that causes us to take our eyes off of Jesus. It's, it's not about their good looks. It's about the Christ inside of them. Um, another thing that has to do with our surroundings and world is politics, right? The agenda of Satan is to divide us through conflicts of the world. The church is divided all because of politics and the conflict of the world. So the enemy will use that to take our eyes off of Jesus. As Christians, this is my advice to Christians on politics. And I, everybody who knows me knows me, knows that I used to be, you know, I used to have an unhealthy um, interest in politics. And this is what I say to Christians now. As Christians, we should be aware, but not attached, okay? We should be aware of what is going on in this world, but we should not be attached because we have no control over what's going on, but God is in control either way. Even if we have a godly president or an ungodly president, and at the end of the day, you know, neither option is godly, you know, right? Neither option is godly. But as Christians, as believers, we know which option lines up with our beliefs and with our values. The person may not be godly, but, you know, at the end of the day, none of them are godly, right? So we should be attached and we should be aware of what's going on but we should never be attached as christians it's important to be aware of what's going on politically in the world it's important to vote it's important to have a voice right but at the end of the day don't be attached because we are just passing through and whether we get the president we want or not god is in control either way something that i've learned and this is very hard for me to say because i'm stubborn is that even if I'm not a fan of who the president is, God put them there, okay? Even if I don't agree with who won the election fair or square, it doesn't matter. God knew. God is in control. God put them there for his reasons, and he's God and I ain't. So as Christians, we must be aware, but we must not be attached. And I see I see it, and, you know, I can say these things because I was there. You know, I was there. I see a, very, a lot of unhealthy um, attachment, you know, uh, pol po politics matter, but at the end of the day, they don't matter like that. It, it, you know, when you're constantly posting about politics, you know, and, and, and I used to do this, I was guilty of it, you know, and I could say this now cause I've stopped, I've changed. I, I practice what I preach now, you know, I never post about politics anymore. It doesn't mean I'm not, you know, aware, but I'm not attached and I'm not, and I, and I don't, I don't sit there and watch a three hour debate anymore. My wife is very happy about that. So the world will cause us and the, po the political strife and, and the conflict of the world will cause us to take our eyes off of Jesus. And we should be aware of that. Number three, another cause for breaking our focus is our own pursuits. What are your plans? You know, and this was meant for the men at the ranch. What are your plans, you know, after the ranch? You know, are you counting down the days? That's a popular one, right? Are you counting down the days till you leave? It's a one-year commitment, but many of them feel like, oh, I'll be good in 30 days. I'll be good in 90 days. You know, they're kind of like on the two-week plan. Everybody's got their own plan, right? What are your plans after here? You know, are you just counting down the days um, till you graduate so you can go back and do what you really want to do, only sober now? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, we as men, we think that all we need is to be able to function. You know, if I can just, you know, 
kick these habits, right? Whether it be drugs or alcohol, right? You know, uh, I, if I could just kick those habits and all I need is 30 days, all I need is 60 days, you know, then I can go back to doing what I was doing and I can do it sober now. And we know that's a lie from the enemy. We need so much more time to kick these habits because we can't do it on our own. We do it in God's strength, not our strength. When we do things in our strength, we end up at these places where we tried it our way and it didn't work. And now we got to do it God's way and we got to let God do what he does, right? We can't rush the process. When we, we, we already, we've already tried it. You know, we've already tried that, myself included. My issue was alcohol. I already, I already tried that. You know, my way didn't work. You know, God's way worked. That's what got me sober. That's what got me clean and sober um, alcohol. Alcohol was my issue. Okay. So our pursuits is your will in alignment with God's will? More than likely it's, it's not most of the time, right? Because we struggle, right? So is our will in alignment with God's will? Or do we even care about God's will and his plan for our life? You know? And it's not, you know, overnight, but are you open to God working on you or just trying to become functional in this world? Because don't expect these this drastic change to take place in your life overnight but are you even open to god and his plan for your life and his will or are you just trying to become functional in this world because god wants you to be so much more than just functional he wants you to thrive he wants you to thrive in your God-given purpose. God don't want you to just be functional. He wants you to thrive in your God-given purpose. You know, Matthew 6, verse 33 is a very popular scripture. You know, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. The problem is we tend to skip that first part of seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We just skip to all these things. You know, we want God to add all these things to our life and we skip the, the first half of that scripture, it's seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. What are all these things? Well, if you truly seek God and his kingdom, right, first, if you truly put God first, what he will end up doing, because I know he did this for me, is he will change the desires of your heart. He will redirect the desires of your heart. And now you'll desire what he wants you to desire, and then he will give you those things. He will add all those things to you. So put God first and watch what he does. Just, just try it. You know, just, you know, oh, I'll try that. I'll try Jesus. I'll give Jesus a try, you know, but you know, speaking in a way that many will relate to, just give it a try, you know, just give it a try. But you know, sincerely, it's all about sincerity because God sees the heart. So if you're not sincere, then, you know, it doesn't count. You got to be sincere. Be honest with God. Hey God, you know, I really don't know much about this, but you know what? You know, I'm going to I'm going to surrender to you fully help me because, you know, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but I'm going to put you first and then watch what he does. Keep your eyes on Jesus and watch him fix your mess and change the desires of your heart. If you allow God to do all this, he will change your desires during your year at the ranch and for you know all of us outside of the ranch if you put god first and truly allow him to do his thing he will change the desires of your heart don't settle god can do so much more if you just surrender fully don't settle for less than god's best don't settle for just wanting to be able to function in this world. God wants you to do so much more than function. He wants you to thrive. So don't settle for less than God's best. Fully surrender to God and watch what he will do in your life. Now, we talked about the causes of broken focus and taking our eyes off Jesus. What causes us to take our eyes off of Jesus? Now let's talk about the benefits of keeping our eyes on Jesus. The first benefit is peace. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, don't worry about anything. I'm sorry, I skipped. <laughs> Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. That's Isaiah 26 verse 3. And I'm always reading out of the New Living Translation. You know, somebody in one of my YouTube shorts tried to tell me that the New Living Translation is not, um, you know, um, respected or uh, trustworthy. And he was, he was, um, he was, you know, pumping up the King James Version. No doubt the King James Version is, you know, you know, 
extremely it, that's like number one right i've got a couple king james versions bibles back there obviously you know i've got quite a few bibles you know and i got many translations so love the king james translation but if i sit here and read from the king james i'm gonna lose a lot of my viewers right uh, and i don't got many to lose you know so um a little bit on that the new living translation we all know is a very trusted uh, you know i thank that guy for his comment but he was he was wrong on that um, the New Living Translation is known to be one of the most uh, trusted translations that is easy to understand. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to change which translation that I use. So the first benefit of keeping our eyes on Jesus is peace. He will give us peace. Isaiah 26, verse 3 says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all those whose thoughts are fixed on you. And in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, New Living Translation, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. So God will give you a peace that makes no sense. Now, how do we... Normally, and I say it makes no sense because you'll be in a situation that doesn't call for peace. It calls for stress. It calls for anxiety. Yet you are in perfect peace because you trust in God. So God will give us peace that makes no sense because it makes no sense to have peace in this situation. Yet we do because our trust is in God and not ourselves. So how do we normally respond to stress and anxiety and, and, and difficulties? We usually, you know, flip out, right? You know, we flip out. But when we put our trust in God, we respond differently. We, we acknowledge the problem, but we know that it's all under control. We know it's there. It's real. We're dealing with it. Not trying to belittle anything that anyone's going through. But when we trust in God, he gives us peace while we deal with it. How we respond to stress, how we respond to anxiety, how we respond to the difficulties of life is our testimony to the world as Christians. It's our testimony to those around us. That's why it's important to, you know, be real and let people into your life. That's why I, I, I asked for prayer on Facebook to get as many people praying for the situation, you know, for my wife, for my son right now as we wait on, on you know, on answers from doctors and specialists you know and we're believing that it's just you know something minor because he has no symptoms praise god he has no symptoms but you know it's there and we're we're trusting in god right so that's why it's important that we share what's what we're going on what's going on in our lives because people need to see how we respond differently they need to see peace in unpeaceful times you know how can you smile you know what's your secret you know one of my favorite songs is called it, it it's kind of taken from that that oldie, you know, change is coming, right? But it's a newer version. It says, you know, hold on, change is coming. The, the, the song starts off with, let me see if I can remember this. He goes, um, I don't listen to it often. He goes, um, yesterday a man stepped to me and he said, how can you smile when your world is crumbling down? I said, listen, here's my secret. When I want to cry, I take a look around and I see that I'm getting by and I hold on change is coming. So people need to see that. The world needs to see that. Our Christian brothers and sisters need to see that. Man, they're going through this and that, but you know what? They're not losing it. They're not losing their mind. Sometimes they're barely holding on, but they're, they're trusting in Jesus, right? People need to see that. So hold on. Change is coming. Don't trip, bro or sister. God's got you. The second benefit of keeping our eyes on Jesus is unity. The enemy looks to divide us by race, color, culture, um, differences, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When our focus is on Jesus, the world cannot come between us. Jesus will make the oddest of allies. He will make the oddest of couples, right? He will make um, us allies in Christ, you know, or twins in Christ, right? You know, I think of the movie uh, Remember the Titans, right? It's a really, really wonderful movie, you know, true story, right? Based on, you know, the you know, racism back then in Virginia and all that. And, you know, 
the, the beginning of the movie, you know, the whites and the blacks, they were separated. They, and they got forced to play together and they didn't like each other at first. Right. Because of the differences, because of the culture. Right. And because of the way things were there in the 60s at that time. And, you know, Gary Bertier and Julius uh, Campbell, they become best friends after fighting and hating each other. Right. And by the end of the movie, you know, Gary Bertier, he gets into his accident. Julius comes to see him in the hospital. And what does the nurse say? Oh, I'm sorry. Only kin is allowed in here, meaning only family. And what does Gary Bertier say? Are you crazy? Don't you see the family resemblance? That's my brother. And she just smiles and lets him in. The change that had taken place in his character, in, in his, his mindset, he now saw Julius as a brother. So God will do the same thing with us. He'll make the oddest of allies, someone that you never saw. Your enemy will now be your brother. You see that a lot at the ranch, right? You know, a lot of gang, a lot of gang affiliation, right? Your enemy now becomes your brother. Um, there's no such thing as color. We're, we're, we're all the same. We're all one body in Christ. Don't you see the family resemblance? Our unity in Christ as brothers enables us to look past the pettiness of this world. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 says, Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. So I don't care if you're a blood or a crip or white, black, brown, Asian, whatever. We are all one in Christ, right? And God will make the strangest and the oddest of allies. The third benefit of keeping our eyes on Jesus is we will become stable in Christ. We become unmovable, unshakable, and unbreakable. Difficult times will not destroy us. We learn to grow through it as we go through it. Okay, I'll say that again. We learn to grow through it as we go through it. We come better for it, man. Another Another um, analogy, another example from Remember the Titans. What does Denzel Washington tell them? Other teams don't have to deal with race like we do, but we're better for it, men and women, right? We become better for the trials that we go through. All these things that take place in our life that the enemy is using to destroy us and to take our eyes off of Jesus, all these things will only make us stronger as long as we persevere and push through and trust in God, we will become better for it, brothers and sisters. We will laugh in the face of adversity. You know, I thought of the Lion King, right? Growing up, that's my era of Disney movies, right? The Lion King. What does Simba say? I laugh in the face of danger. Ha <laughs> ha You know, and then the hyenas come out and show that that's not really true. You know, at the moment, he hadn't developed his roar yet. Um, but, you know, we will laugh in the face of adversity. Not always easy, but possible. You know, Matthew 7 verses 24 and 25 say, anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock, though the rains come in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat up against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on the rock. So you hear, you listen, and that's wise, you know, Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise. So you can listen to the teachings of Jesus and not follow it. That's not wise. But it says anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise. And when the storms of life come, their house won't be destroyed because it is built on the rock, the bedrock. And the fourth benefit of keeping our eyes on Jesus is we become effective. The enemy wants to waste your year at the ranch, man, men, you know, your, I, I combined the word ranch and men, your, your year at the ranch, the enemy, he wants to waste it for the men at third phase. He wants to waste your time at third phase. He wants you to become complacent. He wants you to, um, you know, start to take it easy. And when we take it easy and become complacent, we take our eyes off of Jesus. So the enemy wants to waste all of our time when he succeeds in causing us to lose our focus, we will lose our effectiveness. And we must be effective for Christ. When we keep the main thing, the main thing, which is Jesus, 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 
He will make you effective in your calling. And you all have a calling. You may not realize it yet, but you have a calling. Everyone out there has a calling. And all callings matter. There's no, there's no like, no, they're all equal. Whether you're preaching at a mega church or you're an usher at a small church or you're the janitor at a big church or a janitor or a small church, you know, a volunteer at whatever church, your ministry matters. When you're out and about, you're a walking, living testimony. Your life is your pulpit and it all matters. We all have a calling and they're all equal. There's no imbalance in the body of Christ. Pastor so-and-so is not better than brother so-and-so, okay, or sister so-and-so, you know, we are all equal and we all have a calling. So when we keep our eyes on Jesus, we become effective. We must be so on fire for Jesus that people will call you extra. Don't be obnoxious, but be clear that, yes, I am a Jesus freak. And that's just how it is. You know, you're called. And that's why the enemy is out to destroy each and every one of us. Because we're called. And our God-given potential frightens him. It scares the hell out of him, literally, right? You know? The fact that we're called is the reason why he wants to destroy us so much. Because if we reach our God-given potential, and we will, right, he already knows. He already knows that's nothing but bad news for him. And he's already got enough bad news because he's doomed for hell. He's like, man, I need to take as many people with me to hell because there's no hope for me, but there is still hope for them. So I have to take as many People with me because he's the most hateful person in the world. He's not your friend, right? The enemy is not your friend. Satan is not your friend. He wants to destroy you. He wants to take as many people with him because he knows he's doomed. And he wants to destroy as many people as he is. 1 Corinthians 2.2 2 says, For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ the one who was crucified. That's the Apostle Paul talking there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. We are in this world, but we are not of it. So don't be distracted by it. Don't let it take your eyes off of Jesus. Don't let the distractions of this world take your eyes off of Jesus. Don't run from the storm. Embrace it. Anchor down. I just saw the movie Twister, the remake. Obviously, I remember the original because I'm 40 years old. Um, I just saw the remake and it was awesome. And, you know, as I was watching the movie, I couldn't help but take an, an example from this. You know, it's a, it's a secular movie, but I'm seeing spiritual examples in it. You notice in the movie, uh, the, the, the male character, forget his name, but he's crazy, right? He's like this crazy cowboy. And he, he chases tornadoes. And instead of running from the storm, he runs at the storm. He runs at the tornado. He drives into it and he would have this contraption on his truck where he would literally anchor down to the ground it would go into the ground and it would dig and he would anchor himself down and he would literally look up into the tornado it was nuts but he would literally anchor himself down and when he did that in the movie i instantly you know just saw you know oh man that that's 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 a that's a spiritual analogy right there so don't run from the storm embrace the storm anchor down and grow through it as you go through it you know we tend to cry out to god rescue us from the storm that we're going through bail me out lord but what we need to do is we need to anchor down and grow through it embrace the storm embrace the trial and never take our eyes off of jesus don't waste the storm god allows the storm to teach us how to remain focused on him while in it there is nothing learned from easy times. We learn so much more from difficult times. And understand that when we resolve, when we decide and make that decision to fix our eyes on Jesus, what this does is it invites opposition from the enemy. So expect it so you're not surprised. Oh, the, you know. Mm. Don't worry. The enemy's never going to be late. He's always going to attack, but expect it. Expect the attacks from the enemy. Expect opposition. When you make a choice for Christ, expect the enemy to oppose you and trust in God that he will carry you through. Expect it so you're not surprised and always stay prayed up at all times in the good and the bad. 
always stay prayed up. Don't forget Jesus in the good times, because then when the bad times come, you're going to sink. So always stay prayed up, whether times are going good or bad, because when times are going good, that's probably when you got to stay prayed up even more, because inevitably times are going to change, right? One of my recent um, shorts that I just posted Sunday on YouTube, I talked about the seasons of life, right? In that short. And um, I talked about how seasons, you're either, you know, my last two shorts on Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, I was like, you know, you're going, you're good. Times are good. Times are bad. Sometimes times are blah, you know, it's just going. But one thing you're going through seasons of life and you go through good seasons, you go through bad seasons, and you may be going through a bad season right now. And one thing about seasons that you can always depend on and that you can always count on is that that season will come to an end. It will come to an end, whether it's good, whether it's bad. Things are going good. Inevitably, eventually, times are going to be rough. They're going to be difficult again. You're going to go through something. So if you stayed prayed up during the good times, you're going to deal with that bad season a lot more better. If you just took a vacation spiritually speaking, while times were going good, as soon as, you know, things change, you're going to sink, you're going to crumble because you took it easy. You got complacent and we're all guilty of that. Right? So in closing, Psalm 16 verse eight says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Psalms 16, verse 8. When I talked about the favor of God, I talked a lot about God grants favor to those who refuse to be shaken by the circumstances of life. So I know the Lord is always with me, and I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. He is right beside me. Psalm 16, 8. And Psalms 25, verse 15. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues me from the traps of my enemies. And Psalms 119 verse 18 says, open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. Psalms 119 verse 18. So I leave you with this. When we focus on Jesus, when we keep our eyes on Jesus, it removes all disappointment. And in life, we will deal with a lot of disappointment, right? But when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, it removes all all the disappointment. So I thank you guys for listening tonight. I knew this was going to go longer than last week because it's not, I'm not breaking it up into several weeks. It's just a, it's a, I guess you could say a one-off, you know, it's a standalone message tonight. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see what, you know, the Holy Spirit directs me to speak on uh, for the next couple weeks, because I really like to do, you know, you know, topics now and stretch them out for a month. So tonight was different. It was a little longer. Um, no breaking records tonight. Last week I kept it under 30 minutes. That was a miracle and a record. Not so much tonight, but this is still not bad. And if the guys at the ranch watch it, it's perfect for them because they have an hour block. Um, so, you know, this is right under an hour. So an hour block to listen to it. So I thank you guys for listening. Uh, like I said, I've been sitting on this message all month waiting, uh, was supposed to give it at church. Things changed, didn't happen. Um, you know, that that's life, right? Things change. So, um, I always intended to put it on the channel afterwards. So, um, it didn't happen. So now I put it on the channel. Keep your eyes on Jesus, whatever you're going through. Um, keep your eyes on Jesus. Things it, life is difficult, right? We don't, we don't make no promises. I'm not making no promises that, Oh, things are going to be easy. We, we can't make those promises. Right. But we as Christians, we as believers, we know that no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, God remains in control at all times. And we're not gonna we're not gonna do this perfectly. So don't beat yourself up. Shoot, I'm a mess, you know. I've talked about it all year. 2024 has been a messy year for Brother Sam. And um I've sank a lot. And God has had to, you know, yank me out just like Jesus yanked out. Peter, I know, he's like, shoot, you of so little faith, right? You know, um, we're human. God gets that. Jesus, he sympathizes with us. He knows what we went through. He came, he lived this life as a human being, emptying him, himself, right? Philippians, right? 2-7. He emptied himself and he gave up his divine privileges and he walked this life as an actual human. And yes, Jesus is God 
and the Holy Spirit, three in one. I know that, you know, to the world that makes no sense, but the Bible talks about that as well. The carnal man will not understand these things. You've got to ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding, and then the understanding will start coming. So, you know, God sent his only son, Jesus, to live this life as a man, and Jesus emptied himself, Philippians 2, 7, and he gave up his divine privileges to walk this life like you and me. He understands what we're going through. He understands everything. He, he gets it. He gets you and me, and when he sees us struggling, he gets it, and he's praying for us, right? He's interceding for us. That's why he's praying for us, because he understands what we're going through, and you know, I'm just, you know, going through things right now in my mind, you know, things are just coming to me, right? You know, and we're human, right? And we believe, yet we doubt, you know, because we're human. And, you know, what's that, you know, story in the New Testament, right, where the father's son is demon-possessed and he, he cries out for his son, you know, I believe, Lord, help me with my unbelief. So be honest with God. There's no point in not being honest with God because he already knows. He knows, but it's still important that we're honest and we tell him things because that builds relationship. So God wants us to communicate. Don't keep nothing from God because he already knows. Be honest. Keep it 100 with God. Tell him what you're struggling with. Tell him with your doubts. Tell, tell him about your doubts and your your. Ask him to help you with your unbelief. It just seems like this is never going to end, God. And clearly I'm talking to myself right now. It seems like this is never going to end. So, Lord, help me. Lord, help me to see the bigger picture because I don't see the finish line like you do. But help me with my unbelief. So I thank you guys for, for, for watching. You know, I'm just Brother Sam keeping it real on extreme devotion. Everything I talk about, I'm talking to myself first and I'm sharing it and I'm dealing and I'm walking and I'm, and I'm struggling and I'm, and I'm sinking sometimes. And I'm like, Lord, pull me, pull me out, save me from, you know, and you know, I'm going through it at the same, at the, I'm going through it in real time. And I'm just putting it out here, the hot mess that I am. So I only who I am, I, I am only who I am in Christ because of God. All right. And thank you guys for listening um, hope you enjoy the new intros and outros here on Extreme Devotion. Like I said at the beginning, I get bored and I just, I'm always, you know, updating things here on the channel. So my mom will be on next, this coming Sunday. And I thank you guys for listening. Feel free to leave prayer requests in the comments and I do check them. Um, God bless you and have a great rest of your week.